on. We're on. Holy shit, we're on. Man, what a fucking epic week. Welcome to class in session. What are we on? I wasn't actually spo I'm on weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I Jeremiah think is still on Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> he got he got high on Amsterdam. I was very high on yeah. Amsterdam. <laughs> he was smoking cobblestone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stuff. solid man. So um, I wasn't supposed to be here today. I was supposed to be in court this morning Ooh. from that bullshit that happened at the Vancouver airport. But yesterday I got a phone call from an RCMP officer who was filling in for Officer London. I believe was my arresting officer, London. And um, he, uh, he informed me that um, my court date today was canceled. So I'm not sure how this works because I only had one promise to appear. And that promise to appear was December 3rd at 9 a.m. in Richmond. Now that promise to appear was canceled. So I don't think I have to appear anymore. Well, you only promised to. Appear I only promised to appear one time, and I signed my name to that promise. And I was I was told that that uh, that promise didn't matter because uh, the, my name was indeed not on the docket. So you I, uh, I said, no "Thank promises. you very much. You've saved me a trip to Richmond." And he said, "Well, that was the point of the call." And um, I wished him a good day, and that was that. You were so about it. so I'm happy to be here today. Rather than sitting in a fucking shitty courtroom in Richmond. No <laughs> kidding. Lucky guy. Well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll just be the end of it. Fortunate. Maybe not lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. So we're just back from Amsterdam. We yes, we are. Turned on Sunday, I guess. And, uh, Holy fuck. What, what a, a crazy party. week, man. Now, we're, um, Jeremiah was doing, uh, was doing a little bit of um, covering for Sublimator and Pod TV, so he had uh, he was a pretty busy guy. I was full Sublimator, and um, it was literally a full time smoking gig. Yeah. Um, my day would start at around 8 a.m. Uh, get to Greenhouse on Harlemer Strat by uh, fuck I don't know in between 10 and 11, where I would consume copious amounts of cannabis and cannabis resins till one in the morning mm -hmm. fuck pretty hard that's like you know that's a hard thing to do oh yeah and stay that's awake shift, like staying man. awake the whole time and being able to talk to people holy shit yeah it was a it was a full-time gig um i kind of miss amsterdam <laughs> I, I i'm not even it. joking i i literally no, I, I, I miss it it's one of the only places <clears throat> that i've gone to that i seriously considered when i came back like wow that's a place i could move oh uh, it was like my second day there I, I'm like, I'm moving here. I don't know when I'm going to try to do it next August, but 100% I'm moving there. Uh, it's not going to be a permanent thing. I'm going to do both. I'm going to be there for six or eight months out of the year and back here for a few months. And no, I'm just going to bounce back and forth because that place fucking rocks. It definitely rocks. It's, I've it's never like, been to such a crazy party city. I've been to Las Vegas before. I've been to California, other places. Um, but man, I'm saying that Amsterdam, everybody's just there to have a good time. It really, yeah, for real. And, and, and they're having it. Kind of like how what Vancouver is to Canadian cannabis, Amsterdam is to international cannabis. Yeah. I got to meet people from Germany, from Barcelona, from Italy, from Russia, from uh, Ger what, Germany, did I say? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, from uh, Germany. What the fuck is that crazy? <laughs> There's another place. What are those guys called? <laughs> oh, from Denmark? That's not who I was thinking of. Um, those crazy Vikings. Met a wicked Viking, na Viking named Michael from Denmark. So shout out to you. Mike the Vike. Yeah, Mike the Vike. Yeah. Fucking blacksmith berserker. He, um, the second day of hanging out, he started speaking to me in, uh, in Danish. Oh. Yeah. And I had to stop him. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> So that was an honor, you know. You know you're in when somebody starts speaking to you in their native tongue and not realizing, oh, wait a minute. Mm, how drunk was he? Oh, he was, it was like middle of the day at, uh, <laughs> well, at the greenhouse. Well, it's Amsterdam. Yeah, that's true. You know how drunk I was in the middle of the day? That's true. Well, the hotel had free booze. So, it's true. Yeah, these guys would wake up and literally hit. It is now. Uh, yeah, these now guys would wake up and just hit me. the fucking, hit the... Uh, 
the mini bar. <laughs> yeah, the mini bar was fully stocked. Every on a day they would restock. Daily basis. It. Here's some wine. Here's some. You didn't vodka, have to pay for it, rum. so it was like, why wouldn't we hit it up? Yeah. So we started drinking, and you know we'd make our way to different locations like churches, other places, <laughs> and get sauced there. They got kicked out of a church. <laughs> we got kicked out of a church for drinking. Uh, that was funny. It was a very, very old church. <laughs> you should have got on your knees and asked for forgiveness. Ah, we should have. <laughs> Don't kick me out, please. I said that. It I was want the, redemption. I said it's a sacrament. It's this is the blood of Christ. But they just. I guess they didn't agree. No, I don't think maybe like, they didn't agree with that, but they didn't agree with our loud, obnoxious comments about you know the the uh, confession and, booth being the priests and altar boys and altar stuff boy like that. Booth. Yeah, these guys are you know. <laughs> there See, was, it's <laughs> it's we were trying to be funny. Yeah, it's just yeah. Those, I, guess I think you were influenced. You were you were influenced by some poor influence though. I was. I was with marijuana Steve. Yeah. So you know who. I love Marijuana Steve, though. Though, uh, I, I mean, f- I, I thought he was funny. I thought it was a good trip with I, him. I, I actually had, I had some shits and giggles with the guy, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, he's not a bad guy. I was expecting it to be a horrendous uh, experience having to stay with, uh, with Marijuana Steve. Right, and the three of us actually <laughs> shared a room. We yeah, all stayed the in the Yeah, the three of us in a room. And, room. I, and really I, I actually, I didn't get mad at him once. I didn't yell at him. I didn't, I didn't even want to slap the guy, which is amazing. That so is, I don't know if he was on his I best behavior him, or if but... I was just that chilled out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if he's really not such a bad guy. I think, yeah, it's a little bit of each, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a really fun time. I've got, uh, I've got some video from the bus. Oh, nice. That fucking crazy Russian party bus? Yeah. Oh, bus, my God. That bus. was fun shit. Okay, the... Um, there was a bus that would shuttle us back and we're forth We're looking from for 109 one and 35. Venues. Yeah, the, the way the cup works is it's in a couple different locations. So there's the main venue, which is the Roust, and it's like a basically a World War II, you know, Navy some construction kind of, facility. Some kind of bunker slash yeah, machine I shop. think they're making boats, old boats in there. They build <laughs> U-boats or something. I actually think they're making meth there and selling it to Italy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, whatever they were making there smells like motor oil and, <laughs> and cannabis cup. So yeah. yeah, it was the High Times Cannabis Cup in the uh, in the old factory, and, and <laughs> in the old factory. But you would leave there, and oh, we would yeah, go to the Milkveg, which the milk is veg. the uh, it's like a stadium kind of thing, or like it's a, a it's basically it's like a nice a, venue. It's kind of like um, kind of like the Vogue. It's it is like something like that, like the but Vogue. not not as like you know it's not as theater esque. It's a little more of a box with some fucking right. It doesn't have any seats really. On no, the lower parts. they're literally steps like this. Yeah, that you little have to sit steps. On. It's kind of like it rolls into these yeah. steps. It's more like yeah, it's I like thought, a mini I, mini stadium. I with feel no bad seating. for like big guys, man. Like Jeff. Jeff didn't go because there's no way he's like fuck as, as if I'm gonna go fucking sit on those little two inch steps. Yeah, exactly. Can, no, he. It's, it's hard, not man. Meant for him, really. So I, uh, you know, Milkweg should uh, should think about that. Throw a chair in it's there. It's a lot so of big motherfuckers in Holland, man. That's right. Like, fucking, yeah, it's not uncommon to see Mostly a Viking, fit like, people, you know, though, fucking you know? six foot nine Vikings walk past you. It's, you know. Yeah. Red Light District is pretty crazy. But I found out you can't get anything. Just, you know, you can't get everything in, in Holland or in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I came <laughs> to the conclusion that the holy grail of freakishness would be an amputee midget. Now, amputee midget. I, I have to say, I think that is probably one of the freakiest things. Amputee midget. You know, yeah. I just haven't ever come across any. No, sort. it's that's that's because it's the holy grail. It's rare. Right. It might not even exist. Is my point. You might be right. You know, so I figured that's what I would be looking for while I was in Amsterdam. <laughs> and no fucking way, man! I walked up to this place. Literally, <laughs> live sex show. They have little dogs licking. Buttholes and all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit, man. Wow. I didn't see it's that. It's fucked. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> little the, dog the, the pink buttholes. elephant place across. Oh, from I was gonna place. go there. It's called it's, the uh, Rosa. No, it's it's just it's down the, the street. From, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's, Rosa. There, there's three Casa Rosas on, the, yeah. on that strip. I because I went to a club. Brittany and I went to a place called the Bananen Bar, Bananen Club. And that they get really interesting with the fruits and vegetables yes, there. Yes, three three floors. Yeah, three floors of fruit and vegetables. Um, but girl they, on girl, girl on banana, and guy on guy. I didn't see the all, guy all, on guy. It, it just depends what floor you're on. Ah, I see. I yeah. see. Each we, floor caters to a different uh, 
a different demographic, I Definitely guess you could say. Definitely a different experience than the stripper clubs here in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're the different. girls come and actually and sit down with you. Well, that's because you pay like 30 euros to get in the door, so the girls are extremely friendly. Yeah. You know, you've prepaid for your lap dance. Essentially, you know, yes. Is, is, what, is what it is. Yeah. So this is, a little, uh, this is a little video I made on the party bus, and I don't know, it was just a fun fucking time. So here it is. So that was the party bus. Party bus rocked. It fucking rocked. The second night, the party bus wasn't so good. Or the, the second time I was, was on it. It was, it was a different guy. The Russian guy was the best. He was rocking like just crazy fucking house funk disco. Did he, did he talk to you? Did he say anything the in The Russian particular? guy? Yeah. Yeah, the Russian guy was awesome. No, but I'm wondering because you do such a great Russian accent that I thought maybe you'd uh, regale us with <laughs> some, of his, some of his commentary. We have bottles of rum and coke. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm outside this fucking this crazy live sex club. Drunk, like drunk on Jagermeister, stoned as a motherfucker from doing dabs and uh, weed for 16 hours. Like, literally straight. And I, I'm staggering down the red light, uh, stop at this club, and I'm asking this guy, I'm like, he's the big doorman. I'm like, hey, where the fuck do I find the crazy shit in, in Amsterdam? I want, like, the freaky shit, dude. He's like, well, you go inside. And I'm like, no, 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 dogs, yeah, that's cool, but I'm, I'm looking for, like, the crazy shit. And I'm bottles. like, I'm talking, like, amputee midget. And he stops and he looks away. <laughs> and he looks down and he looks at me and goes, Dwarf? <laughs> and he stops and he pauses. Dwarf. Why would you want dwarf? And then he stops again and he looks away and he looks at me like, like so confused. Like he's never heard this in his life. This is like such a fucked up request. And it is. It's like, it's the holy grail of fucked up requests. <laughs> so he looks at me and, he, and he's like, why would you want dwarf with one leg? <laughs> and I just fucking, I was so drunk. I just pointed at him and I started laughing and I staggered away and he just shook his head. I'm so lucky I didn't get punched out. <laughs> But I, I found that even the fucking, like, even the street criminals in Amsterdam were extremely friendly. Sure. I hung out with these Moroccan they coke dealers. have anything you want, yeah. And, like, they're, they're asking me for coke every night I'm there. Like, and finally, I just, I said to the dude, I'm like, you don't want to sell me coke. I turn into a very mean person when I'm on coke. You don't want to do it. I'm going to cause a bunch of negative attention to your strip if, I, if you get me high on this shit. So please just don't offer again. 
you know, because I was at the point where I'm drunk enough and I had enough euro that, yeah, I might have even done someone, you know, yeah. with enough uh, enticing. Right. And I so, wonder how it is there because the cocaine here is terrible. Well, what they do, it's so fucked, man. So I hung out with these guys. They thought that was a cool thing. They're like, yeah, thanks a lot for looking out for our enterprise kind of thing. So I'm smoking <coughs> joints. They wouldn't, you know, the odd guy would turn his head and sneak a quick hoot because you can't smoke weed on the streets there. You're only allowed to smoke them in coffee shops. Mm. I didn't know that. We I did really that, care. though. You know I'm what? smoking I smoked everywhere the I went. They, I heard later that they don't bust the tourists no, for the smoking on the No, the cops were looking at me like, are you fucking serious, dude? Mm -hmm. Like, And I'm just thinking nothing of it. Yeah. I'm an abs guy. Woo. So hanging out with these dudes, I'm watching them do deals. And, like, tourists would come up and, you know, they'd get, oh, you want business? You want business? So, they, you know, that was their, their code words and shit. So they'd sell these guys their blow, but it's not like they give you a flap or they give you a bag or, or anything. They have it all prepared, but they bust it open in your hand. So you're stuck there literally with a handful of cocaine. <laughs> and you got it like... <laughs> got it they, they don't it. want people taking it. And like, what, what, if you, what if you work for the police? Then now you have a sample, you take that and you go back to wherever. So I thought that was like... <laughs> It was a little bit extreme, but they, but they they sure seemed to know how to protect themselves. That's funny. It was crazy. So so it was like I hung out with them for maybe half an hour or an hour, and I just kept seeing tourists walk away with their faces just full of fucking white powder. <laughs> <laughs> that is Serves you right for doing cocaine, you dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I actually sat, I sat with one of them as well because um, they. I, I wanted to know what he had. That you know, he said I, when he first. Those came guys up have me, everything. Yeah, they, he first said cocaine, or he wants some Charlie. That's what they call it. He Charlie. Wants some Charlie. And uh, I was like, I don't want any coke, man. He's like, What do you want? What do you want? I was like, I don't know. What do you got? And because I was thinking maybe some ecstasy or MDMA might be nice or something like that, right? And so that's what I said to him, and he's like, Yeah, yeah, I got some of that. And and he's like, uh, he's like, you want a free sample? And I was like, uh, <laughs> just willing to. Uh, yeah, he was going to. They're like, all know, fuck. Everybody in Holland is or in Amsterdam is a salesman. It's yeah. crazy. I was like, well, if I try it, I was like, I don't have a. I'm, this by this time, I had already lost my fucking bank card. Twelve hundred dollars gone missing. <laughs> Jeremiah got out, roofied. Drunk. He got roofied on the first um, night. <laughs> you know, woke up in a laundry mat with no socks on and missing my coat with a bite mark on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> he totally got roofied. It was a, it was a great night, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, so I didn't accept any of his free samples. I knew that he wanted to, me to purchase a whole bunch of it, so I was like, no. But I, you know. I should, probably should have tried. We didn't really try any of the uh, other stuff either, like the mushrooms. We didn't try. I don't know. Why I, actually, I did. I tried oh, a little tried bit of the truffles, and they tasted uh, like fucking shit. Oh, like, I did so hear that they horrible. tasted disgusting. So horrible. I had to eat a bunch of hash to wash the flavor down. Oh. Was like, eh. And then my mouth tasted like carrots, so it wasn't so bad. There was um, that uh, holy oil. Holy oil. That stuff tasted like ass too, but it was strong. It got me really stoned. Yeah, that's what I was rubbing on my bite mark. It seemed to make it. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed to work out all right. Next time we go somewhere, I'm buying you a rape whistle. <laughs> I, I still won't use it. <laughs> You're going to get a pregnancy test, a test kit, a home pregnancy test kit, and a rape whistle. It was just in a... case you get lost again. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, funny because I, I literally showed showed up at 11 a.m. in the next day <laughs> as we were on as you guys were on the way to go to work for the first day and it was the first day of the cup and I was just coming back and I'm like where am I what am I doing <laughs> pale. see all the veins in his face all the skeletal structure you look like you'd come off a 30-day crack binge it was uh, pretty interesting it was heavy duty <laughs> <laughs> and I actually but fun I missed mo like almost the whole first oh, the whole day of the first cup day you slept. <laughs> I was done <coughs> I wasn't even sleeping. I was vomiting most of the time. <laughs> I was like really sick, actually. Really sick. That's, just, that's as sick as I've been in a long time. And that's what's weird about it is that I don't remember really drinking. I guess we did drink at least half a bottle of that Grey Goose. Yeah. And that stuff, you know. I, don't, I haven't been drinking a lot these days. So, But when you're in Amsterdam...
When you're in Amsterdam and the booze is free at the hotel, it kind of gets you going. That's right. Well, so yeah. we got uh, we got a bunch of videos here. Yeah, it's this not all bus a, videos. This is a dublimator video that I did that turned into a quadruplimator. Start. Yeah, it went. So it was went supposed to be a. It was supposed to be a triplimator. Yeah. Through two tubes. Now, uh, yeah, it's fucking. <coughs> it was hardcore. This is the 153. <laughs> Diggity Dank says, Rufy equals no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Jeremiah seemed to have a fun time, so I, who knows? I have no negative memories of Amsterdam, so. I'm going to call you Rufus. <laughs> Ruf- his, his new pot TV nickname is Rufus. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Rufus, man. Rufus by the lake. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So this is, uh, this is uh, some footage from Greenhouse Seeds. And um, I'm really stoned, so a lot of the videos, um, I, I got to come up with a new, uh, a new way to open a video, because everything is like, hey, this is all the alchemist with class and session and be uh, pot TV and be real TV, so it's like, all these two-minute videos, you're going to have the same fucking intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stop doing those. We and love that like, intro. Al. Check this out. <laughs> That'll be my new intro. <laughs> all right, here we go. So check this out. Hey, what the fuck's going on? We're at uh, Greenhouse Seeds on uh, Harlem Strat. And I'm going to do, I did a dublimator earlier. And now I'm going to do a triplimator. A triplimator. What do you say, Enrico? Triplimator. We just came up with that idea like uh, three minutes ago. All right. So uh, let's do this. We got Big Jeff. We got Terry. We got Jeremiah. So we got, we got a bunch of people I don't know if I want to put on camera because I don't know if they want to be on camera. Everybody that's is it okay? Wants to be. Yeah. We got these great people here. They don't mind being on camera. This is uh, this is something for Pot TV, Be Real TV. Hold on, hold on. You ready? Hang on. This is for all you fuckers at Fuck Combustion and uh, every other. One. Hang on. We're gonna get this shit going. Hang on, John. Hang on. Just let me know when you guys load your dabs at the same time. One, two, three. No, sir. Holy fuck, man! I think I think you're gonna get ninja, motherfucker. You got oh! ninja. You got ninja. <laughs> gotta finish this because it's rolling down. I got quadruplicated. Now what did you just do there? Oh, wow. Still there. <laughs> And that's pretty good. That's a great way to enter a greenhouse today. I just walked in the door, boom, little fucking one, two, and then a knee, and a kick to the groin, all at the same time. Now the alchemist, and uh, <coughs> keep watching. <clears throat> all right. So that was pretty fun. That was literally the first quadruplicated maybe four minutes at greenhouse yeah and that's how it continued the whole fucking time i was there it was monster dabs i was doing dabs off the slabs the guys from dna um dabs off other guys abs no i didn't do any that was you on (laughs) rupees but uh, actually um i wanted to tell you in amsterdam but it was Brittany and i that roofied you (laughs) <laughs> and uh, we have uh, we have the um, the Jeremiah tapes that are coming out oh, soon. I can't wait so, to see uh, these. So you can get been, your oh, you I've can been... get your DVD box set. It's uh, it's eight and a half Nobody hours of footage. DVDs we don't have anymore. the laundry mat footage, um, but we we do have eight and a half Dude, hours of footage. We should acquire that laundry mat footage. Concrete room with some girls. Yeah, that's where the bite I, mark happened. I do have happened. a couple mm, yeah weird memories. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, what a fucking fun time, man. Like, holy fun. shit. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It's, what's weird about Amsterdam is it's not like a North American city. Here in North America, all of our cities are so massive. They're just so wide, and the scope of them is so big. The roads are huge. The buildings are huge. The blocks are huge. You know, and <laughs> Vancouver, actually, is kind of small compared to some of the other ones. <laughs> but uh, in, in Amsterdam... The city is so compact. And it's all built like a web. It's not built like a grid. It, 
it fans and it's like, out like it's this. one thing. It's like all the buildings are connected Weird. together in these long facade faces. These just like crazy flat faces, and they have all these like tall buildings, little skinny buildings that go in. And each building is so skinny that when you go inside, it's just jam packed with people. Every single building is jam packed with people the entire time you're there, <laughs> and you can't move anywhere. See, and you can't do there's anything. There's a there's a zoning thing in Amsterdam where you could build as high as you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a with property taxes you only paid for how wide your property was so you yeah. see all of these weird shaped fucking buildings yeah. buildings and go some like of this. them some of them are literally leaning forwards like this it's oh yeah they really crazy. are too yeah well <laughs> crazy so stuff old right so let's uh so I don't know if any, if you guys know or not but uh, sublimator came in um third in best products yeah. Now, Big Buddha um, seems almost like a predetermined thing. B- Big Buddha wins, I think, every year with his uh, with his gift bag, yeah, or, which or is some a, sort of something. It's a strange thing. Not now, really. It's a it's a very costly event, and it's it's kind of like it's kind of like how 420 is, right? You guys need you guys need people to buy booths to help support the thing and right. if a guy buys enough booths, they get to fly their flag on the on the thing and maybe get get a, a deal on the advertising and stuff like that. It's just the way events work. So, I, I think Buddha puts a lot of money into this event. He does put a lot of money in, I'm sure. You can tell He had by, like five tables. You can tell by his booth. Yeah, he, 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 got, he got the best booth, and it wasn't the best booth. It was the best five booths. And they're like 8,000 euro a pop or something like that. Right. And, you know, but so uh, that's fine with me, but why have a competition where you have a category called new products? No, it's just or best products. Or it's just product. products. Just not best even new products. Product. Just best products. And a gift bag is a product. Well, he's not selling those gift bags. Though. Well, uh, things that are in that gift bag he's selling. Well, the things you that are in seed. The things that are in the gift bag are that seeds. Seed, that seed. But that's you, not entering in, in the competition with the other strains. No, it's it's it's. He's not entering it in. Uh, hey, I got the best strain. So you could sell. You he, could just bring your seed and say, "This is my product. This is a seed." Yeah. You can grow yourself a house full of weed with it. He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's it's great marketing. I guess so. I have to. To me, hey, how's it going, to man? me, it seems kind of strange. Tommy Bong is in the house. There he is. Oh, he's got a double meter with double him. Double meter. It's got a lock on it. <laughs> Look at that. That's Tommy top Bong's secret got equipment. His fucking his uh, hermetic pelican case. Yeah, it's hermetically sealed. You can't. Let's, nothing can get uh, what in. What do we want to play? Let's play that series of shit from the bulldog. Now, I went to the bulldog with marijuana Steve, and they were so fucking cool. They let us set up in there. They let us put the sublimator in there and. We got some kids from England so fucking rocked. It was pretty fun. So if you go through the thing, it's the one that's 105, 102, 208, and 207. They're all in a row. And uh, we're going to play all of these in a row, I guess. So uh, we'll check back with you guys in a bit. And uh, like I said, just, uh, you got to deal with those shitty intros. Oh, you gotta, he's got to set them up. Gotta just like set bowling pins. Knock them down. Just like bowling pins. Just like bowling pins. Oh no no, it's uh we gotta do it now. <clears throat> okay wait, how about now? How about now? <laughs> I'm gonna do some clobber funk in the meantime. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I could load this up again here with this little nugget. Yeah, um, there were a whole bunch of other things about Amsterdam that were really cool. All the canals. Oh, so man. we've got these long canals that stretch out between the streets and there's actually like transport boats carrying passengers back and forth through these canals that would go underneath of these great crazy bridges and we would see people you know a bunch of german guys on a boat that was going fun. by yeah those yeah, guys were yeah, like yeah, singing and yelling yeah it was fun they're all like got singing some video a, of that actually singing a song about chocolate pretzels Ah, yes. I made some really good bros from Germany, man. There's like, there's three dudes there that I was hanging out with um, fucking daily, literally for hours and hours. These guys would come and puff down. Chris? And, uh, yeah, Christoph, uh, Marco, and I can't remember your other name, your, 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 the other dude's name there. Blonde guy. Older big, guy? Big blonde guy. Shout yeah. out to you too. So um, that's for my bros from Germany, uh, also from the crew from Barcelona. The Lowrider crew, shout out to you guys. 
uh, everybody really like fuck you <coughs> you were so hospitable it was it was an awesome time shout out to all the gre- guys at greenhouse to uh, thanks a fucking bunch yeah yeah how's it going rose big, big big thanks to the guys at greenhouse for being so cool like extremely hospitable man like so hospitable they uh yeah they welcomed us with open arms i feel like i got family there now so pretty cool anyways everybody did here we go this is great. uh this is at the bulldog hey what's happening subculture this is al the alchemist we're in amsterdam and we've got the sublimator hooked up at the first location this is at the bulldog uh, lounge and uh, hotel so here's the unit we got to crank to 10. Don't want to show anybody here, so that's the unit. And uh, yeah, this is um, this is pretty epic, <laughs> I have to say. So uh, stay uh, stay tuned to Pod TV and to uh, to uh, Sublimator Sublimator uh, YouTube channel. Um, for this crazy shit that we're going to be doing in Holland this week. We're here for eight days, and um, it's going to be an epic, an epic time. Peace out. All right, what's going on? The sublimator is hot. So I'm going to do the the first rip here from the sublimator crew in Holland. <laughs> oh, this thing you fucking got rocks. Them high. <laughs> I'm very sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't think they mind being high. <laughs> so there we have it. Sublimating in Holland. I just want to show what the weed looks like after. Because that looks like it burned, right? <laughs> All right, I don't want to show anybody's uh, any of the patrons' faces here, so um, yeah, rock and roll. We're sublimating in Hall. This is different. Hang on, we'll, uh, we'll go through it in a sec. What the fuck's going on, subculture? This is Al the Alchemist. We're here at the Bulldog, and uh, we've got a Cheech Bong, and we've got a Sublimator Vaporizer, and we've got, what's your name, bro? Jason, man. We've got Jason. And uh, we're, we just hooked this up. The, the, the staff at the Bulldog were so kind. They said, yeah, man, just uh, go ask uh, go ask the front desk for, uh, for an adapter and plug it in wherever you can. So uh, we've done that, and a lot of heads are turning. They're like, what the fuck is that thing? So we're going to load you up here. Now, when you start inhaling, inhale a little slow until you start, and, and still you start seeing, um, like, the cloud build up, and then you can give her. Okay. Slow, you Yeah. And don't touch any of that because it's pretty hot. No, it held really hard. Well, slow slow until it starts clouding. Now you can give her. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Is that not ridiculous? It's not like vaporizing, is it? Like, you, you, have you tried the volcano? No. No. Have you tried other vaporizers? Yeah. You guys want to rip that? No? Please go <laughs> Yeah, man. All right. So, uh, so that's that. Um, Marijuana Steve and I are going to be uh, ro- rolling around uh, Amsterdam, getting people rocked on this thing. And, um, yeah. Hopefully Enrico really cleans up at the cup this year. I think he has a cup. I really think he does too. I mean, Soma's mind is blown. Uh, The Greenhouse guys, they're right on to it. Um, So yeah, there we go. Pay attention, subculture. Hey, what's going on, subculture? This is Al the Alchemist. We're still at the Bulldog. Oh yeah, don't touch that stuff. It's very hot. 
Uh, we're still at the Bulldog, and uh, this guy's gonna do a sublimator rip. This is Smokey Robinson, and he's gonna do a big rip for everybody. Dialed in. Beautiful. Pop the bowl. Let me grab the sublimator. Yeah, pull pull the bowl and take a hoot. Awesome. What do you say to that? Guys, that is fucking amazing. That's, that's amazing? As soon as that's on the market, I'm going to buy one. It's, it's on the market. You can order them at sublimator.ca. That's awesome. I'm going to buy one when I got it. There we go. Uh-oh. Now it gets you pretty high. It gets you very high. All right. So uh, there is another another happy happy trial. <laughs> I haven't I haven't met anybody that's been um, been displeased when they've tried this thing. So it's fucking amazing. When when we first had the volcano going around um, when I lived in Winnipeg, it was very mixed mixed emotions. People were like, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Joints better. Everybody that's hit this unit has said, "Holy fuck!" Man. So I have to say, Sublimator is on top of uh, on top of the game in vaporization. <laughs> Looks like you're back. We are back. Nice. I think I just blew my speakers up at home. Nice work. Nah. And everybody else. Green screen sleeping. You didn't call in. Make sure we were recording and stuff. No. No. <laughs> So, oh, um, I was supposed to press record. Uh, that was some crazy kids at the, uh, at the Bulldog. And, um, the staff at the Bulldog, I could tell they were like, they so wanted to try it, but they were all working, so they couldn't. Yeah. Uh, the manager kept coming over and he's like, that's such an amazing thing. <laughs> that is so amazing. Are you guys coming back? Are you guys coming back? Yeah, there's several locations at the Bulldog. The Bulldog coffee shop in Amsterdam. Yeah. And, but there's several of them. And now, yeah, there was, uh, I think popular. there's, I think all of them have three or four locations. <laughs> yeah, it really? seems like it. They're, they keep repeating as you walk through the streets. And everything's kind of really close together. So it doesn't take very long to walk through the entire city. Mm -hmm. And you see sort of re a lot of repeats of stores and restaurants. Like the Feebo. Oh my god, Feebo, stay the fuck away from Feebo. Feebo is what so the cool. Hell? It, no, it's, it's bad. I just like the way it looks. Now, I did. I really didn't eat a, anything from oh Feebo. Oh my god. I had a croquette uh, from there, and it was, I, should, I have to say, the croquette wasn't so bad, but the whole idea. A croquette is a piece of cheese, that's, no. or it's like, piece of, it's like got cheese and meat inside of it, right? Uh, yeah, a croquette is like a, it's like a, a puree. It's like an outer side of bread. It's like a dumpling or something. It's creamed. It's a creamed yeah. meat. Yeah. yeah breaded and then yeah it's oh, bread it's like so fun like it they're, looks like they're a the twinkie of deep it looks fried. like a twinkie really? but it's meat inside instead of like anything else yeah it's a it's a it's a creamy meat twinkie yeah <laughs> sounds kind of gross creamy but it's meat so good twinkie. um now the croquettes at uh, Fibo, they they were like the frozen mccain version of croquette that's all i can say it wasn't horrible but it wasn't uh I was it, I was and high enough that it was edible. Now, and the the way this works, it wasn't as Feebo, bad as the fucking airplane. You food. walk into a Feebo and they have an entire wall of lockers, of little teeny windowed lockers. So fucked. And you walk up to the little windowed your, locker and you press the button and open it and you can you can see well, you through them. Your coins and they in. have all the food inside. They have like hamburgers in these little windows. And you walk up and you press a button and you open it and you take your hamburger. Well, you got to put your coin in first. Yeah, you put your coin in, press the button and open the door. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You don't have and, to talk And what's to crazy is when you pull your hamburger out, within like 10 seconds, you see a hand and there's another and hamburger, hamburger that gets put in the, the supply. Spot, man. It's so fucked up. It's kind of like it this. It is so fucked up. It reminds up, me of the Jetsons or something. <laughs> you know, it's just like an automated it was hamburger weird, service. Man. It made me uncomfortable. I didn't Robo like it. Robo burgers. Now, a pretty amazing thing happened. 
Um, we were at Greenhouse, um, and uh, Sublimator was there, and so was Verdamper. And Enrico, I don't know if uh, if you guys know it, but he's he's so he loves the Verdamper. He has one by his bed. Like he just loves the Verdamper. <laughs> so sharing the spot with everyone. He spoons was, uh, with it every night. Yeah, he does. He's yeah. like he probably you know. I love you, Verdamper. Hey, this is my Verdamper. <laughs> <laughs> we love Enrico so much. You know, uh, Green Supreme came up with a new a new name for Enrico. Fun Rico. Fun Rico. Fun Rico. That's pretty good. He's the funnest motherfucker. If I ever go on any vacation or, or a long-term trip, that's a motherfucker I want to go with because he's fun as hell, man. He just he wants everybody around him to be having a good time. And they usually and, are. And they usually are because you can't not have a good time. So, yeah, it was, a, it was um, awesome going there with him. Now, uh, and it was awesome that he sent us there. Yeah. He brought us there. He paid for like, us to go literally there. Literally foot the bill. It was crazy. Yeah. I got to say. It was all him. Thanks, he made bro. it all possible. Seriously, thanks, bro. That was uh, greatest trip of my life. Yeah. yeah, that was epic. Nothing but thanks for that, man. But um, yeah, we had a, we had a very interesting encounter. Can we play the long, long one? It's long 17 long. minutes. We're not going to play the whole the whole 17 minutes. We're going to cut some of it off um, because uh, there's a lot <coughs> of it where. Um, Everett's got two Verdampers now, one for extracts, and the extract one is a, it's a little bit um, it's a little bit in depth. We have to like there's a, yeah you got to coke this coil and like yeah it's 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 pretty it's pretty hard to do, but it's a you get such a fucking heavy rip off it. So uh, we're gonna cut the video short because some of it is like there's literally I don't know six minutes of just fucking around with with the coil getting it hot. Um, right. But there was an interesting dude from Scotland who's, uh, who's got a um, part of a, um, an international network um, called Single Fathers for Cannabis or something like that. Oh. I can't remember. There's a, a quick interview with him, too. Uh, so here we go. <coughs> this is... <laughs> Clean it up for you, fast there. There you go. You got to pull hard. Here we go. Class in session. This is history. This is the bridging, the the, the the vapor bridge. This is the beginning of the vapor bridge right here. The vapor bridge goes all the way over to here, and we're going across the vapor bridge to one of the pioneers of vapor. <coughs> Look at the. How do you feel? Works for the tenth of a gram. What's that? No, there's no water in it uh, because it does not need it really. But I could put water though. But to me, I don't like it with the water. You don't like. No, I don't like it with water. I could put the water, but then the thing is, like my machine creates so much oil that if I use the water, then then we miss. Uh, I lose all the oil that comes out. In that oil, I can redab it on it. So it's just like a feet, 15 grams, 15 gram of oil that I can redab on the machine itself. And uh, and also what I got here is is with that machine here, I can actually take a take a little bit of weed like this. Actually, oh, I think a dab here with a little bit of oil. Because take a little bit of oil here, and I can take a little bit of herbs also at the same time. So I take the herbs, put them here. There's screen. There's no screen there, Jesus. There's a screen in there. No, there's no. Screen. Oh, there's no screen in there. I'm gonna go there. I'm sorry. Then we go here. Then we take this here, and we can put it on the side in the holes here. <laughs> So we can do oil over the weed. 
the same time, and it keeps going. Here, let's show him the nail. And... Never burns. <laughs> the vapor is done, I capture the vapor and thermally radiate the vapor again. I reheat the vapor after initial extraction. This is where I can create such a big cloud out of such a little amount. So and this one here works with a little different way. This one here is... Do you want to try oil? This one, you're going to love yeah. this one. This one worked with six atomizer. You have initial contact with the metal. Sit, sit. Six, atom six holes here with 90% of mass that revolves around those holes. So once you have your initial contact with your with your medicinal matter with the metal, it goes through those holes and get refined. So I dropped it. We'll do it again. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. One, two, three, go. It's all there and there for you. Beautiful. Great lungs. It's a good way to smoke oil, no? <laughs> Alright, let's go let's go get some good amper rip. Yeah, let's go to the band and burn for them for Push bomb. Here I got some right here. Wanna finish it? Ah uh, yes you can. Let's go to the bird amper now. <laughs> How's it going? So this is a this is a really awesome uh, awesome time out here. Uh, Greenhouse uh, Green, Greenhouse has been hooking hooking everybody up and really like really being some really seriously hospitable hosts. Um, loving my time in Holland. Amsterdam is beautiful. It's full of culture and uh, there's a lot of really good people. You okay? Yeah, something to drink? Yeah, yeah I'm doing good. Doing good, yeah? Yeah, it was a lot. It was a big, it was a big dab. It was a big dab. Hop, hop, hop. Yeah. Yeah, you would have liked to have it with water. <laughs> Big dabby? Big no, wow. I wanted, wanted to have water filtration, which I didn't have on mine at that point. But you can put you can put mine on water filtration also. I'm just trying to promote our organization when I'm here. Oh, wicked. You'll know that's from marijuana across the States. Awesome. So I'm we're, trying, uh, we're trying to produce chapters in Europe now. I'm, I'm, I'm with uh, I'm with Pot TV. Right, good, good. So let's do a little... Uh, why don't you tell everybody what you're doing? Just really trying to promote the uses of medicinal cannabis. <coughs> Example, cancer patients. Yeah. People taking fits. These kids we see taking fits every day. They're giving them Ritalin, drug addicts. They're and giving them methadone. And Why give them methadone when they can treat them with a high CBD strain of hit, uh, cannabis? Exactly. This exactly. Can be done. I know this. Can be done. I've, I've gotten people off of uh, off of um, crack, like crack cocaine, using uh, using shatter. Um, uh, a sativa, like a really racy, racy uh, sativa shatter, and I've gotten people off of down using very, very gooey, gooey. Well, hashish primarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, eat, eat a bunch of hash. Eating your, eating your hair on addiction. It's and yet, my, myself, myself. I was doing uh, not not a not an 18 year, but I had about maybe a two year two year heroin stint, and I wasn't quite addicted, but I was I was well, I guess I was because I went through like a week of like shit, but I kicked I kicked it on the back of a Greyhound bus. No, it, wow, three years of methadone. Very wow, see, and meth methadone. You know what? I, I commend you on coming off a methadone more than I commend you off of coming off a of heroin, because methadone is so much harder. To, it's engineered to not come off of. Exactly. Uh, you make money on methadone, eh? yeah, so yeah, that yeah, is yeah. Uh, no problem then. Eh? What's that? Money. I mean, oh yeah, there's yeah. a lot of money in methadone. Yeah, so, yes. Uh, they don't want you off the methadone. No, no. Uh, 
if you hook, you can bet where you hook to methadone then or heroin, man. Well, well, yeah. well if that, that's... Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, otherwise, we make no money, you know, so we have to make money, so... Uh, and that is true. Methadone is the one of the cheaper ones that they're using. What they're using now is things like Suboxone, Brittle Fex. Brittle Fex, for instance, in the UK is £7.50 for one tablet. You would maybe have to take 12 of those in a day. And Suboxone, they're stopping people on more very low doses of methadone and putting them on a dose of Suboxone. Suboxone, eh? It's raising the tolerance, which is a far more addictive drug than the methadone even is. Why are they doing this? It's money. They're doing it for money. It's, well, uh, we, we, yeah, we know that uh, that pharmaceuticals are engineered to keep people down and uh, and these programs, like methadone programs, we, we know that um, uh, the heroin addict uh, and uh, the, the street, the, the, the quote, unquote, uh, what society calls the street junkie, are, are free thinkers. Yes, yes. And what better way to uh, to catalog and to track and to keep constant monitoring on a free thinker than to feed them the addiction that's keeping them as a free thinker. So it's a it's a very interesting way to keep people down. Um, well, and and, 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 the, and, and cannabis side. does cannabis does cure most yeah. things. So please please do take these and. Um, Oh, I will. I'm gonna. Um, we'll put this up on yeah. Pot TV. Yeah, and hook, hook us up on it, and um, we'll put your links up on the page and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, brother. As I say, I'm trying to start new chapters in Europe, all over the world. Uh, Dad's from marijuana.org, yeah. so you're going around Europe trying to start yeah, chapters we're parents, everywhere. We're parents that, that we're basically saying we're normal people. We're normal everyday people that are doing normal everyday jobs. Why should we be criminalised? Exactly. You know, um, for instance, in teaching our kids that cannabis is going to kill them in the UK. Um, my daughter knows that that's not true. Hopefully, the next generation will know even more. If parents like myself and even more respectable parents stand up. This is what we need. We need parents that are policemen, parents that are judges, parents that are doctors to stand up. But they're all too scared to do this in the UK. All right, we got Enrico hitting the hitting the verdamper here. <laughs> This is one of the uh, one of the other stronger, stronger hitting. It packs such a huge rip. You got one at bedside, don't you, Enrico? Right next to me. Right next to his bed. I have many videos with me. See? Yeah, you do too. <laughs> and this is another one live at uh, Greenhouse on Harlemer Strat in uh, Amsterdam at the 2013 High Times Cannabis Cup. This is a vapor bridge. Two pioneers with the vapor bridge. <coughs> Got a picture taking them all of us, mate. Fucking A. <coughs> Fucking love the Do you like the sublimator? Uh, I think so. You he think so? He likes the well, the verdamper. And you know you can do the sublimator out of glass too, eh? No, I don't. I don't. He needs to try it out of glass. That's the thing. Do you want to try it out of glass? Tomorrow we are doing that. One thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. So, so tomorrow we'll put some water in some glass for you, and then and then we'll do it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't be so pushy. Thanks a lot, man. But now we're going to do this machine. Wow. You, you have to suck when it starts uh, to uh, do a paper. Oh, wow. I'd love to try a dab off of that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's some science. So that was a pretty epic moment, actually. It was uh, a vapor pioneer. Like, Everett's one of the, he's, he's an OG. Yep. You know what I mean? Like he is. He's a he's an OG when it comes to uh, vaporizing. So for him to come over and uh, acknowledge the sublimator for one um, was was pretty epic. But to actually try it and to you know talk a little bit of the science with Enrico, it was uh, it was a great moment. Yeah. So I don't know what else happened. Hung out uh, with Brett from Apothecary Genetics. 
Such a cool motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Now, in Holland, I did a lot of dabs. Yeah. So much. So much. And I have to say, they definitely took their toll on my lungs. I find that when I, uh, when I vaporize, um, when I'm sublimating flowers, I, I can go all out. Like, I can go through an ounce of flowers in a day, an ounce and a half, no problem. And it doesn't, it doesn't affect my respiratory like, um, like the dabs do. Today, when I got to Cannabis Culture, I walked to the top of the stairs, and I was actually a little bit short of breath, which I thought was unusual. So, something to think about if you are rocking dabs. Um, Ray was saying, you know, it's because I was just going, I was, I'm a fucking cannivore. I came up with a new, there, there's, there's a new term for what I am, and it's a, it's a cannivore. And, no, but, but see, my, my point, my, my, my point being is, That's a good point. I, I can, That's I can go excessive with flowers, no problem, but I don't have the same respiratory damage. I know, but I'm still not going to be short of breath when I when I jog up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, I hit the gym at the hotel. I was hitting the I was hitting the uh, the sauna in the gym, not like full on, but I mean I haven't really exercised a whole lot while I was here in the last few months. <laughs> Actually, maybe that was it. Maybe it's just because I haven't exercised in a couple months. Hmm. Ray may have a point. <laughs> Well, we're not talking about your body. We're talking about mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just calling you out. You're saying that. Ray's an avid dabber. Well, yeah, sure. But uh, I, I still think that uh, that solvent extracts are harmful for the lung tissue. More, more harmful than flowers. That's all I'm saying. Or bubble hash. If you were to make water extracted resin. If you're smoking solvent flowers, you need shit in. What's that? No, I, uh, that's, the, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a solvent extract like I was smoking. No, no, you, you, no, you have no idea what we were smoking out there, Ray. It was so fucking world class. It makes this shit look like bunk. Okay. Like, I'm not joking. I've got pictures. It's like, it's so clear. You, I, I have my fingers up to it, and it's like, you can see almost my fingerprint. <laughs> Well, no, my, my point is I can, I can smoke bubble hash in, in excess. I can smoke flowers in excess. I can, like, literally go through a fucking a quarter ounce of bubble hash in a day and not have respiratory damage. But when I do it with dabs, there's no way I can smoke seven grams of dabs in a day and have clear lungs. There's no fucking way. So which tells me that solvent extract is harmful for lung tissue. That's all I'm saying. Because think of the, the thing. It's, it's, it's... Alcohol, which gets completely evaporated. That's why they use such a volatile alcohol because it all evaporates. Oh. It'll evaporate at room oh, temperature. Okay. That stuff. <laughs> no diff No different than a pure melty bubble hash. You get the same the same return. Like when when you're when you're when you're weighing it as a percentage from. If I use a hundred grams of really good bud, I'm not going to get much hey, more sure. on a clean solvent extract than I will on bubble hash. So the resin is the same. It's just it's not tainted with something that has been hit with a solvent. Solvent leaves a it, it leaves a fingerprint on anything. It doesn't matter how much you purge it, how much you do all of that. It still leaves a fingerprint, unless you're using the highest highest grade solvents, and not everybody is. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That lemon shatter they were used, I don't know what the fuck they used for that, but it was so clear. Literally, you can see my finger right through the glob, right through it. It was like bright, bright yellow sunshine. It's, mm. so, it's fucked up. You held it up to the light and you could see right through it. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 show, I show my hand through it. It's, it's fucking heavy duty. Yeah. Yeah, there was definitely some nice extracts there. There was, but... There was, uh, there was just too much of them. <coughs> there wasn't enough bubble hash. Mm -hmm. That's what I noticed. And everybody was passing their wax off as hash. <laughs> it was, it, seriously, 
Yeah, yeah. It's a in the contest. In the contest, it has to be entered as Nader hash. <coughs> it has to be. <coughs> Otherwise, it's a it's illegal if you call it a a solvent concentrate or a concentrate resin or anything like that. So it was being marketed as liquid hash or uh, um, solventless shatter uh, Nader hash. All these different terms because they have to be clever. It's not as free as everybody thinks in Amsterdam, man. Those guys are fucking. They're pushing the envelope like we are here. Uh, the the cops don't like it. They don't want it there. Um, they're phasing out coffee shops every year. There's less and less coffee shops. Mm -hmm. um, Rotterdam, unless you're a local, you can't go to Rotterdam and buy fucking weed or hash anymore. That's crazy. Yeah. Like they're they're really they're. It's not as free as everybody thinks. Um, there is an incident, I don't know if we can even upload it on here. I wanted to play this video, but there was an incident at the High Times Cup, uh, right in the expo part. Uh, ben Dronkers was giving away weed yeah, we have from Sensi yeah. Seeds. Yeah. Um, now, that's like that was so frowned upon by High Times. They're like, they came up to every booth on day one and they said, please, you can't give away weed. You can't. You can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, you can only have five grams per person at your table because the police will be coming. They, uh, they kicked... They were searching everybody at the kicked, door. Who was it, TH Seeds? Uh, Delta 9. Delta 9 Labs, they kicked out of the expo on day one. Yeah. Literally, they got fucking removed For giving away expo. weed. Not just for giving away weed, they had... Uh, they were told at the beginning about the five gram thing and... Everybody's like, yeah, whatever. It's Amsterdam. Fuck. We want to smoke weed. Five grams is going to last me an hour. You know, fuck you. Mm -hmm. So the, the cops uh, literally singled them right out, went right to their booth, and they had, um, I guess, a couple backpacks with a bunch of jars in them. And that was it. Boom. Out of the expo. I think they got all their weed seized. I don't know if anybody got charged, but they got removed on day one. Yeah. Not a cool thing. Not a cool thing. Yep. Uh, so the, they're very oppressive over there, and and their I think social social activism is greatly needed in Amsterdam. What changed? Did they have new legislation for them? Christian fundamentalists. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. From from the best of my understanding, it yeah. wasn't communicated in those words. <laughs> no, they have a they have a conservative government that's been there for a few years now. That's causing all kinds of problems, putting pressure on the business community there and shutting down these stores. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there a were also. A guy from Italy said there were police roaming the crowd. It's all the fucking church people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> where, where was was his was his English quote? <laughs> yeah, and I actually interviewed the police on camera. Yeah, they didn't like that too much, did they? They didn't like that. No, <laughs> they didn't really want to talk to me, and they nope. didn't, they didn't really like me at all. And actually, none of them, the security didn't like me either. Um, <laughs> they searched me. They took away one of, a gram of weed because oh, I had cool, six. pretty cool though. They took away your shake. It did, they did. <laughs> Those like, guys were he cool. He separated all the buds from the shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He took a, the shake away. And um, so that was nice. But, like, really? But actually, afterwards, when uh, this whole Ben Dronkers thing happened, where you guys oh, are yeah. going to see on the video, well, right after this is happened. Is ready to play? Brittany, who is with me. Um, I don't know. It's on that zip You're going to hear Brittany do. at the beginning of the video. Marius, the video that we're going to play, it's called Ben Dronkers. Ben Drunker's cop, yeah. Wicked. So, and that play part one, and then there's part two. But now, um, this video, so what we're going to see here is Ben Drunker's is the uh, founder of Sensi Seeds. He's the fucking emperor of Amsterdam. This guy is a big man. He's the billionaire. He is a billionaire. He is, a for sure. I and, think a few of those guys are billionaires. And he also has, uh, he also owns the Hemp Flax Company. Yeah, European company called Hemp Flax. And they've got contracts with some, some of the most Everybody. prestigious car companies. All are, of them. Like all, the, all the new and... stuff in BMW <laughs> is made of hemp. All the new stuff in the Bugattis are made of hemp. All the new stuff in yeah. all these cars are made of hemp. Yeah. And these guys are the ones putting it in there. Well, they're using so, hemp plastics, hemp fibers. Exactly. And fucking everything. It's and uh, and so these guys are totally rolling, and he, he doesn't like this whole thing that's going on. And nope. Ben Dronkers wants to give away weed too. So what does he do? He he gets three of his girls dressed in sensi girl outfits to go through the crowd and start handing out bags of little bags of pot to everybody. I got a few bags myself. Nice. And, Did it break uh, clean? 
It did burn clean. Of course it did. It did burn clean. Actually, <laughs> like that, a stuff, lot of stuff. that was some of the best stuff I smoked the entire time mm-hmm. I was there. And I uh, want to give a shout out to Karma for the fucking headbanger and the biker OG. You're a fucking solid motherfucker, dude. But Sorry. You, oh, that's not, no no problem. Um, but so there was this whole you know animosity going on the whole time with the uh, people who were giving away pot. So there was a security guy in the crowd. And we're going to see what happens in the video right after this. <laughs> but you'll hear Brittany in the she, beginning here. Brittany just Brittany fucking is, singles him Brittany, out. Brittany <laughs> uh, gets crazy. And then so she She's was awesome. later targeted by the cops or by the security because they didn't like her. Nope. And they didn't like us. And uh, like, they were hey, following you blew us our cover. And, you yeah. nosy bitch. It was interesting. So, But, um, yeah, Marius, let Shout me go out ahead to and throw that on. Yeah, Brittany is You're amazing. fucking solid. She's hilarious. She just doesn't take any shit from anybody. No, she's solid, man. Yeah. Fun you don't want to fuck with that girl, man. Fun girl I'm, to travel with. I'm glad she's on my side. That's all I got to say. All right. Here we go. Ben Dronkers. Hey, what's, what's up there, man? He's a cop. He's a cop. Hey guys. Ben Drogas is in there. Hey man. Ben is in there. What do you want? What? No, I'm not in the collection anyway. I'm too old for this shit. Tell your mother. We should stand up for the rights. Fucking A, Ben. Right on, dude. You're a solid motherfucker. And you got to remember, like, he's an OG. I don't know if you realize that, but, like, if, if you're talking North American street cred, that guy's a motherfucking OG. That guy, yeah. is, that guy started the seed trade, really. Like, you know, yep. one of the founders, the forefathers of uh, Dutch, uh, the Dutch seed trade. Yeah. So... And so, right after this happened, then, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, the editors of High Times are there, and Dan oh, Sky, no. Oh, no. Oh, Dan no. Sky comes running in, and uh, our deposit. He tries to <laughs> exactly calm the crowd down. Um, of course, you saw them escorting the security guard out. Uh, Marius, do you want to throw that other video on? Sure. Dan will speak for himself on this one. Yeah. Poor Dan. Yeah, I feel bad for him. Kind of. Yeah, but. Whatever. This is the building. Let's go. And, I'm sorry, Tim, to interrupt you real quick. That's eight minutes. It's not long enough. I'm sorry. Listen, folks. Hold on. Everybody, listen. Please follow the rules. Whoever's handing out the weed, 
please stop. All right, we have it. It's just not the way things are going to go with this campus cut. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, these are, are the rules. This is the law, and we have to follow Dutch law. So I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you can see we got a situation where people get a little bit upset about this. So in America, it's not that way. We're going to have to deal with this, okay? So I apologize for the interruption. Sorry. Free the weed. Free the weed. Free the weed. Burn it well, off. The thing is, now I, I understand your position exactly. I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry. Okay. I'm not sorry. Barcelona, the, the, the new museum, and it is really incredible. Um, it took me 10 years for renovation, they will get money a bit, and it is a real piece of art. And the main, you know, when we started with the Mickey Mouse Museum here in Amsterdam, it was a Mickey Mouse Museum. All right. So, uh, you know, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of what High Times has to deal with trying to set up yep. these fucking events and really this is the last place in amsterdam they can get there's yeah. no other place they can rent no i went afterwards and interviewed both the sensi girls all three of the sensi girls i why they don't have it at the milk Lake. and i also interviewed uh dan about what happened there and he gave me some info one-on-one -on -one about what happened so i've got the video that stuff's going to be up on pod tv this evening crazy stuff man and, and you know these guys got some major bank i I almost think they should just build a permanent cannabis cup facility and they can have the uh, the other one there. What is it? The High Life Awards that's in Amsterdam. There's a few There's a few um, uh, events that happen in Amsterdam and the High Times Cannabis Cup is just the one that's most known internationally. But right. there's there's a lot of other ones. So they, I think they should just build a permanent facility because right. that's like four, four in a year, four expos in a year. Yeah, it's and they could to, start a whole bunch of them. They yeah. could have a whole bunch more, you know. It's enough to make some bank, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah it makes sense. Or what about one of those big crazy I have a tents? feeling the Dutch don't like spending their own money. Get a big tent. You know, big, <laughs> like the big tents that we They're have smart here. smart Yeah, you're right, exactly. But yeah, no, well, a tent. Um, just got to steal the resources from other countries. And yeah, then, like, like you, they, could, they could do it all in a tent, for sure. Yeah, a tent. We but could, really, we where could the do the anything you want to set tent. up a tent in, in Amsterdam? Oh, you can like, find a tent. There's no spots. You could find a tent spot. They should just, like, build a platform over the canal. Yeah, on, exactly. On, on Dam Street. There. That's a good idea. Dam Straat. You could have tents above the canals. So, um, let's play, uh, I want to show you guys this, uh, this crazy lemon shatter that we got to smoke. Crazy lemon uh, shatter. And the tangy. The tangy was so retarded. Tangy was so DNA. Good. Holy fuck, man. They've got this tangy, and it's... It's almost exactly like this tutti frutti I uh, I used to smoke when I lived in Winnipeg years and years ago. And the tutti frutti was um, Calio crossed to a super silver haze. Mm -hmm. Now originally on day one when we when we tried the tangy wax, it was told to me that it was a phenotype of super skunk, but it wasn't the DNA guys that told me that. And then later it was told to me that it was uh, Calio to super skunk something mm. they're not too keen on on revealing exactly what it is but no, probably not. it it was a lot like the old um calio cross super silver haze and um bud structure was the same flavor was very very similar and the wax was so fucking phenomenal it wasn't really wax it was like really root beer shattery kind of stuff um mm. very strong um but yeah I kind of, I think the lemon shatter was a little stronger, although the tangy had a better flavor. So this is some lemon shatter. All right. And some lemon haze from which it was made. Mm -hmm. 
looks okay. crazy clean. And this is Al the Alchemist, Be Real TV Red and Pod TV. We're here at Greenhouse Seeds uh, on Harlem Strat in Amsterdam. Yeah. And uh, look what we got here. This is um, Super Lemon Haze. Yeah, bring, bring it down out of the light. My Super exposure, haze, my sorry, exposure sorry, is pretty heavy. This stuff is so beautiful. I mean, I'm way overexposed right now, but look at this stuff. It's like you can see my finger behind it. It's gorgeous. This shit is gorgeous. And the lemon very, very haze, good. the lemon haze is such a good stone. It's uh, it's very similar to uh, like in, in so buzz. Can, it's, 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 it's similar to the buzz of the lemon Larry OG. And we got Enrico here behind the counter. So you guys are ready? What do you want? You tell me. I serve. I'll take a kilo of the uh, of the, no, the the lemon crystal. Five kilos shot. maximum here. Sir. Five kilos maximum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, remember, best place to go in town. It really is. Um, you guys, you guys know what a pot snob I am from the shows, and uh, I don't smoke just anything. And literally, these guys have a great fucking menu. Um, I, I wasn't sure what to expect when I came to Holland because we're so spoiled where we are. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really fucking impressed. Um, these guys got a serious, a serious menu. It's, it's really good. Uh, check them out. And um, if you are, if you are from, uh, from Holland. You, you might want to look towards a little bit of social activism because the cannabis, uh, the cannabis community in Holland is is under a little bit of duress. Um, they're having some troubles with the cup. Uh, there's troubles with politics here. Um, everything is still running pretty smooth, but there's there's hiccups and, and bumps. So social activism is greatly needed uh, everywhere, and, and even in even in even in Amsterdam, where cannabis is is so socially accepted. There's still political bumps that these these people are dealing with. Um, uh, yesterday at the Cannabis Cup, the police were walking through. They were searching people. They were searching tables. Um, you know, so you, you gotta you gotta you gotta be proactive in any community and don't and don't be um, you know don't don't get comfortable in your situation. If your situation is good, remember it can be taken away from you at any time. So be willing to stand up and fight for what you've been given. And if you haven't been given it, be willing to stand up and take it. So uh, that's that. And uh, be well, guys. We'll have a lot more. For All right. So I'm loading up some blue stick right now. Oh, blue stick, I missed you so much. This was a strain that circulated in Winnipeg. And... It was originally uh, a trade. These guys in a different province had uh, had the cut, and they really liked the Jack's Cleaner. And the guy that had the Jack's Cleaner really liked the blue stick, so they made a swap. And it was so elusive. Like, it was on the lockdown for the longest time. But just like almost every cut that gets put on the lockdown, it eventually finds its way to freedom. And... Um, yeah, I'm so happy that uh, that it uh, it came my way. Mm. I thought you said glue stick. It should be glue stick because it's like <laughs> it gets you high like sniffing glue. Used to sniff a lot of glue in the '80s, you know, when uh, I was six. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were six. So I had a. <laughs> 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 I had some butter that turned into uh, a very crumbly kind of waxy thing that a friend of mine gave me. And I turned it into a really nice hash. Looks just like bubble hash. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Squishes just like bubble hash. Mm-hmm. Roll it into a string like that. Pretty good. Rose, do you want to come on the show? So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. <laughs> I may reveal one day how I did it. <laughs> uh, but just, uh, just so you know, 
if because uh, a lot of people when they make shatter it's a process right um and if the wrong temperature if, if you fuck up your step and the wrong temperature happens you get this really like a weird crumbly dry waxy thing mm. but if you know what you're doing you can take that crumbly dry waxy thing and turn it into that and it becomes kind of pleasant again it's very turpinous here did you try it turpinous. <coughs> oh yeah yeah go nuts ray's gonna ray's gonna try it out you should come and do it over here <coughs> sure yeah yeah i wanna yeah I'll bring it and and i didn't use any trichomes like i didn't add anything i just took what it was and it's um how could I say? No, I don't even want to, and I'm not even going to say. So there. <laughs> you got to use steam, but you have to know how to use the steam in order to make it work. Yeah. Steam is part of the, part of the, the process. It's not, it's like, you could, you could, you could substitute the steam for a different, a different source of, uh, of of radiation. Gamma rays. You can use gamma rays, actually. Yeah. Well, I, we're gonna get to that. We've got uh, we've got my friend Marco talking about uh, talking about shit like gamma rays. <laughs> this guy is a he's a brilliant guy, man. We yeah uh, we were talking about all kinds of things. Now one of the things we we talked about was ethylene production in the plant. Now I've I've mentioned it a couple times on the show. There's different fertilizers on the market that you can add to your plants in flower that'll increase their ethylene production and force them to mature, getting crops off in six to eight weeks. But what uh, what I didn't know is that you can induce this naturally, and Marco filled me in uh, on a way using um, using uh, different fruits. So we're going to talk about that. Um, also, he talks about um, biological Lego. How was that? Very nice. Um, yeah, came out clean. Yeah, oh, no yeah, resin. Very, very, very clean. No resin. So it it burns Smooth. away just like just like the oil or the butter. Smoother would. than the than the last. Which phase which it is was weird. At, which I smoked. I got to smoke the last stuff. He yeah, just before I just before yeah. I transferred. Uh, wow. Um, properties, I guess you could say. <laughs> So that's a little bit of marijuana alchemy there. Um, you're going to have to figure out the secrets for yourself because it's like... Um, Not quite as pinish though. No, it, 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 there's a couple... Some of the terpenes have, uh, yeah. have transferred from, from, say... from their sesc form into a monoterp, um, giving it more of a rounder flavor. Mm -hmm. It's not as sharp and, yeah. and spicy. I mean, it's still... It's, it's, it's still... nicer. It's more pleasant. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Neat, eh? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Blue stick, blue stick, <coughs> your resin is so thick, <coughs> holy fuck, <coughs> in my lung I start to choke, <coughs> okay, we're gonna play this, uh, this crazy video with my friend Marco, it's the last one I get, hey, what, what's it titled? No, I know where I find it, There's okay, all right. Yeah. So this is Marco. He's got some interesting interesting things to say about bacteria and algae. And um, we're going to get to him right away. I'm going to rip some more blue stick. <coughs> Holy fuck. <coughs> I can't wait to show this to my friend. He'll be like, how the fuck did you do that? Because <laughs> he seems to know a lot about, about this process, but I haven't seen anybody do this. No, me neither. Nope. Let me see when it stretched out. Hey, look, you can even do this with it. You can you can roll it. It's it, it's exactly the same consistency as water hash. Wow. You 
that. There you go. All right. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a double wind. Show you how malleable this is. All right, and this is uh, this is my friend Marco, and um, this is literally the future of cannabis. This kid. He's gonna change the game. I guarantee it. You'll be hearing his name. He'll be another, you know, Raphael Mashulam or Emmanuel Guzman. You'll be hearing this kid's name. Look at that. See, you can even do that with it. <laughs> and what's cool is you can unwind it. It's that it's that together. All right. Now we're going. Now we're going. Okay, wait. Wait, I gotta call my mom. We're gonna get my mom in here. Greenhouse Seeds in Amsterdam. We got Al the Alchemist here, and Al sitting with his buddy. What's going on, Al? Introduce your friend here. What's happening? This is Al the Alchemist. You're watching Pod TV and Be Real TV. This is Class in Session, and we've got Marco here. He's, uh, he's got... He's got a great fucking mind, and he's got a lot of different approaches to uh, cannabis science. And um, we're at Greenhouse Seeds at the 2013 High Times Cannabis Cup, as Jeremiah says. And there's a lot of people that I've met here that are thinking outside the box. And this guy's one of them. So tell us how you're thinking outside the box. What are we talking about here? Well, let's talk about ethylene production. Yeah, as you know, ethylene is a hormone what the plants use to get ripen or better to signal that the plant is going into the stage where the fruit can ripen off. So actually it's just a hormone where the signal pathway of the plants are involved in. And if you would increase the ethylene content in the atmosphere in the growing room, you should or you would have the possibility to get your, your plants a little bit more or quickly ripen, so they will fruit a little bit more fast. So the process will be decrease a little bit the content because the DHC production can't have its peak. But as Al said, sometimes you have the problem of uh, diseases and pests, and if you have to get your flowers earlier to flower, it would be the best way to do it. Ethylene production. We'll see, ethylene. We'll see what, what happens. Like uh, as the plant matures, it, its ethylene production increases, and that basically kills the plant. It, it, it just the plant dies, right? So in theory, if you put so there's certain fruits you can use. There's banana. There's uh, there's, there's there's uh, tomatoes. Yeah, banana, peppers, like red pepper. Uh, tomatoes, I'm sure apples would work. Apples is a great thing. Apples to go are very with. similar to they are tomatoes. They are different. Uh, so, so what, what, what happens are these these fruits? They're they're sending a signal in nature, and this is an ethylene hormone. And this ethylene, or ethylene pheromone, sorry, and, th and this ethylene pheromone is a signal that other plants pick up on, and they get this signal, and they say, hey, it's time to, har it's, it's like time for us to mature. Those guys are already on the ground. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. So, in theory, if you do have, let's say, let's say you're in, you're in week six, you got, you're like... 42, 42 days in bud, you got, you notice you got some spider mites. It ain't, ha it, you're not, you're not going to spray pesticides on your plants at that, at that time. Like it's an organic grow you won't use or you don't want to use it to, to try to avoid these kind of things. So it would be the best if you collect some fruits, you buy it in a supermarket, but you have to be aware that they are fully ripened already. So they're still produce heaps of ethylene and give it into the atmosphere and if you put this in the growing room it will result in a much more quicker or a much more yeah I would say it, the, the just the period they need to ripen will be introduced a little bit earlier because you postpone the flowering time not in the back because you let them grow longer you will give the signal, it's okay for me, the THC content, please go into a ripe enough and not grow more THC, grow more crystals or something like that. But keep in mind, it's because of the spider mites. Yeah, so or, or, yeah, or, if or you whatever want to do pathogen you do. Yeah, and if you want to do it by, by any other thing, maybe let's talk about you have a plant going 
12 weeks into the flooring cycle and you maybe want to uh, shorten this period into maybe 10 weeks then I would say you can drop these fruits into your growing room at the week 8 or 9 something right about and then it the signal to get ripe and more and more will be given to the cannabis plant so it will get ripe and much more earlier. But if you say you will put it into after five weeks of flowering period into the growing room, it could cause a lot of stress because the plant is not used to get the ethylene signal so early in the in the flowering cycle. So there must be something unusual. So it shock the plant a little bit and the stress could result into uh, lower yields, lower concentration, uh, home production and all these kinds of stuff. So be aware that you choose the time point a little bit more close to the, uh, what do you say, if you are more close to the into harvest. the flowering yeah, yeah, cycle. Close to the harvest. Don't try to go too hard on them, so not if you are flowering four weeks, you say, now it's okay, I would recommend this. So give them time. Now, now I, I don't know if you guys know or not, but um, algae is one of the building blocks of everything. Um, it's got algae. algae. It's got um, so many amino acids and all different kinds of things. Now, uh, the green stuff that grows in water we're talking about. The green stuff that grows in water, well, guess what? We can manipulate that green stuff using, uh, using primers and markers to start producing um, cannabinoids and terpenes. So, we're going to let him explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, the basic process is called you can look it up, it's synthetic biology. It's like you're producing things synthetically, but you're using nature, not machines. So what you do is you take the algae and use the pathways that are already in the algae. And you put some additional ones in there. That's the code, I, I call it code because it's genetic information. You can print out today like a piece of paper with a printer for DNA and it will give you the exact sequence for the cannabinoids or the pathways, the information they need for producing THC or CBD or CBG and all these kinds of things and you put this pathway away from the cannabis plant, you isolate the genes and you print out the gene and you put it into the vector and into the algae. I say algae because algae are plants, basic plants who live in the water. You can try bacteria too, but there's a problem. Bacteria are not the same like plants, they are different species. And the translation machine for building up proteins, Delta 9 THC is a protein basically, is different. In animals and in plants and in bacteria so you might have the possibility to use bacteria too but you have to be certain that the protein they are building match the three-dimensional structure of the protein produced by the plant so i basically think why don't you use just a plant like the algae what is making proteins like any other plant on the planet so you don't have to manipul manipulate the sequence for the protein. So everything will be a little bit more natural. So, but why, okay, so if you can use algae to produce these cannabinoids, why? We can already produce the cannabinoids with cannabis. Why do we need to use algae? Yeah, if you think um, about there's a lot of solvents. If you make the BHO, you take butane and basically you want to remove the plant matter and isolate the cannabinoids and the terpenes and all this kind of stuff. So why you don't use just the bacteria to grow these proteins so you don't have to separate it from the plant matter. Right. You can break the algae up and just isolate these proteins and then you can use them maybe for cooking, maybe it's not for smoking but for edible production. It's easier to separate this, the THC. They are, they are much, I would say, they don't need so much fertilizers. They grow much faster. They have conditions 
they are not so dramatically uh, for the plants, so you can use a more variety of different grow situation, like if you have these grow tents and all this kind of stuff, so you can grow in an aquarium. Wow. It's, it's for the optical view, something you can build it into your room, it's more like, um, what it's called, like an accessoire for, for making up your pip in your room a little bit. Right. So now, well, well, just, just, think, just think of the small area you can do this in. People are confined to, uh, to a lot of space issues, and there's a lot of money involved with setting up a grow room, hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is a very, 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 very uh, affordable way of doing it, and you can literally do it in a box like this, okay? And you can stack your, you can stack your Petri dishes like this and have 40 strains of cannabinoid profiles. Let's say, uh, let's, let's say we really know that Seedman's Haze works on, on some people for depression. And we really know that Purple Kush works on some people for pain. Well, we can map those those terpenic profiles, those cannabinoid profiles, put those markers in the algae or the bacteria and, and, and the primers, and we can grow those profiles in theory. Right. And, and we can do that all in a box and have all, like, we can have Noah's Ark in a fucking cabinet in, in, our, in, our, in our, you know, our our wall, much like the, the conversion from the library to the hard drive. Right. It's the same thing. So we're talking about the benefits, obviously, are efficiency um, on a couple different levels because of size of actually producing, the time that it takes to produce it, but it also allows you more control because it allows you, as, as Al was saying, to focus on these specific terpenes you want with no question as to whether you're going to get them or not because exactly the same I, I, I wouldn't time, recommend right? if you you can use bacteria and you make a strain for each cannabinoid for exactly and then you can mix so uh, like right, we're going to wrap this up uh, we're all we're all out of video time this is class in session this is Marco one of the one of the brilliant minds of cannabis sciences of the future and uh, he's got a brilliant way that's going to uh, really cancel feminization out so we're going to have more on that in the future as well and look forward to uh, perhaps some video blogs from him for class and session all, all right. the way from uh, Germany. See you, yeah. boys. All right, we're back. So, um, yeah, it, uh, what, what Marco was... Uh, are we frozen? Sorry. No. What, what Marco was about to say is um, it would be easier to um, do one one cannabinoid at a time and then mix them after the fact than it would be to create a whole profile within the petri dish and um yeah and apparently this can be done relatively cheap so he's working on a few things he was uh lucky enough to have a meeting with a couple pretty powerful people over there and i think they the the consensus was they wanted to put him in a lab somewhere so uh, stay tuned because uh, this, uh, this guy is going to be doing some stuff. He's going to be doing the odd video blog and sending it over and we'll be putting it on the show. Um, yeah, he's one of the new leading minds in cannabis, I guarantee that. Um, also, uh, we have... Uh, you want to play the 10-minute um, the one from the camera? Okay, so this is, um, actually wait, no, let's play the one that's 554 first. Yeah. This was a fucking epic moment. Um, Yoa, one of the strain hunters from Greenhouse, uh, every day they were doing a 420 celebration, rolling these huge joints, but uh, Yoa got up and um, he did a really nice... Uh, Really nice, paid homage to uh, to Enrico and Sublimator, and it was a pretty fucking good, uh, pretty good moment in time, as uh, as he would say. It it's a good moment in time. <laughs> fucking a. So uh, shout out to those guys again because you treated us so well. I wasn't expecting any of that. Awesome. Uh, here it is. It's uh, Marco and I talking a little bit about ethylene. I'm pretty stoned. I'm actually not on the ball. <laughs> so uh, there we go. I figure everybody's 
everybody else has a camera, so I pulled my camera out just to fit in. We got Cookie here. We got Tom. We got a friend from Germany. We, you know, I didn't catch any of that that uh, conversation we had about ethylene production. It didn't. It wasn't even recording. So we we had we had like a good ten minute talk about ethylene production within the plants and stuff, and uh, how to uh, how to mature a plant quicker. And there's a theory that you can take a, a, a bowl of fruit and stick it in your grow room uh, near the end of flower, and it'll help your plants. Well, what it does is it sends an ethylene pheromone signal, and it helps your plants um, mature faster. So I'm gonna try this at home with some with some premature stuff. I'm gonna take it at around week six and see if there's any uh, see if there's any hermaphroditic uh, any hermaphroditic results. And I'm gonna start manipulating with uh, my plants with this uh, this philosophy. I've got a theory that if we uh, if we put this stuff in our rooms, you know maybe uh, right around uh, each feeding cycle. We can increase the um, the actual uh, the liquid uptake. So we'll see what happens. It could lock up a bunch of nutrients within the plant as well because the plant would, in theory, think it's maturing. But it's just like a lot of times when my plants are uh, right at that peak, right where they're on the verge of of like dying when they're right at their peak maturity, their consumption levels of water are through the roof. So I gotta see what happens. All right, I gotta walk around here. <laughs> Making the cannabis cup a very special event. Thank you. And now I want to also introduce a special friend of us, Enrico, who can help me with lighting this joint. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Enrico came all the way from Canada. Woo! This supper <laughs> to fuck everybody up with a flower bomb kush. And Woo! A yeah. So happy 420, everybody. Happy 420. Nice. That's a that's a two that's a two fatty salute right there. That was that was a great moment in time. You gotta watch me. I was already pocketing this. <laughs> Joint. Thanks a lot. Well, it's the biggest joint I ever lit in my life, but I mean, this whole thing for me is just like a fairy tale, man. So, happy uh, birthday. <laughs> 
420 is my happiest 420 ever. That goose bomb the whole time. <laughs> Super bien, mi rey. Again, is this? Thank you so much, Ivan. I'm having a great time. Thanks a lot for your for your hospitality, bro. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. You're more than welcome. This is Al the Alchemist. You've been watching Class in Session on Be Real TV and Pod TV. And uh, we'll have more for you for later on. Oh, thank you so much, brother. <laughs> Isso que é um baseado de verdade. Thanks a real more than friends. These guys are family now. We're up. Hey, look at that. We're back. So that was kind of uh a glimpse at the atmosphere over there. Every day was like that. It was just such a just a good place to be. It was kind of like the weed version of Cheers. <laughs> I want to go where everybody has a strain. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now Thomas has a crazy fucking rig here. This is like, this is this is bordering on steampunk, the weed version of steampunk. It really is. Um, so can we turn the camera around? Okay, <clears throat> I want to show you guys this. Um, he's, he's very innovative. This is Tommy Bong. He's uh, one of the sublimator soldiers here, and uh, I've got some blue stick. So I'm going to do some blue stick. Look at this. Look at this crazy rig. Do you feel comfortable enough pulling that up to the camera a little bit, Tommy? Or will the camera get closer to there? No way. It's, that's about as, yeah. Just to, just to show the, the people. A little bit lower? Okay. Oh, sorry, a little bit higher now? There we go. So, so he's rigged up a real doublimator. Now I can take uh, I can take a weed rip and a um, an extract um, rip through the nail um, at the same time. <laughs> All right. No, I want to do the I want to do my sublimate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got the microphone there. Hey, look at that. Feel free if you want a ninja dab. Uh, I'm, I'm open to ninja dabs too. All right. Uh, let's do it in the... Do one in the palm. Oh, and the fucking... Oh, wow. Wait, wait. I'll make it even better for you. Uh-oh, what is that? It's yours. No, I don't want any of that butter. No. No. I'm, I'm so buttered out. All right. I'll go in this one and yeah. you do it in there. All right, so here we go. This is the first time I'm trying this on air. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That was my performance. Wow. Wow. That was fucking killer. <coughs> Is it, yeah? Fuck, I'm not <coughs> getting the hang of this. <coughs> A little bit to the one side, eh? 
<coughs> Coolio. Wow. That was really, really good. So, I wanted to play some music too, but I don't know if we're going to get to it because there was still videos that I could show. Yeah, I know. Do you know what? Let's, uh... <coughs> Fuck it, let's play a video. We're gonna play... Shit. Do we play The Who? Or we, do we play Debashi Bhattacharya? Which one? T in the theater or uh, Tagger Street Blues? They're both around seven or eight minutes. Uh, I don't know. I brush with the tea sometimes. Okay. Okay. Well, let's play the Who because this is this is one of my favorite songs from the Who, okay. and it's crazy because it's on it's on the Endless Wire album, which came out way like maybe f six years ago. Hey, Jerry, you're ringing. Jerry is past. Jerry is past right out. I think the roofies kicked in. <laughs> Quick, let's piss on his socks, take his jacket, and get his bank card. <laughs> we'll go rent some bikes, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll just drop him off at a laundromat and fucking go rent some bikes. <laughs> Lost in Amsterdam. All right, so uh, this is The Who. One of my all-time favorite Who songs, and like I said, it's like it's off of their last album, which came out maybe six years ago. So this is uh, there's actually two songs on this one. This is Tea in Theater, and uh, The Seeker, and it's from a concert in I think 2008. I think. All right. Yeah, we'll come back and say goodbye. Bye. I mean, wait. <laughs> Will you have some tea? At the theater with me We did it all Didn't we Jumped every wall Instinctively
Christmas tree Before we walk from the stage Two of us Will you have some tea? Will you have some tea? At the theater with me Thank you, thank you very, very much. Be lucky, be very, very lucky. A good night. All right, <laughs> now I'm back. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, just coming back to say goodbye to everybody. Thanks to Pot TV. Thanks to Be Real TV.
holy fucking thanks to Enrico and Terry at Sublimator for taking us to Holland. Um, thanks to everybody I met over there for being so generous to such a wayward tourist. And, um, yeah, if you're in Vancouver, 307 West Hastings, come by a bong. If you're in Amsterdam, Greenhouse can't advertise, but I can. <laughs> Go to Greenhouse on Harlem or Strat. They're awesome. They'll treat you right. And there's a whole bunch of shit. There's like the damn Kring right there. There's a bunch of stuff all around there. So, yeah. Um, I'm out. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Um, we'll uh, have some more shit next week. Uh, tune in to Pot TV and uh, Cannabis Culture homepage for a whole shit whack of Amsterdam footage that you probably won't see on the shows. And um, bye. Yeah. <laughs>